Hi everyone, welcome to National Service Training Program Chapter 3 entitled Leadership. So what are the learning outcomes for this chapter? Of course, number one is to understand leadership principles and identify the function and qualities of a good leader. Number two is to analyze the kind of leadership principles shown by the community leaders in time of community quarantine. First, let's talk about leadership. Leadership is a process of influence. It's all about influencing your followers without forcing them to follow you. I also believe that leadership is an action. An action to influence others to do the same. An action to solve a problem. An action to inspire others not just to do good but to excel in all aspects. Leadership is a process of influencing others and an action of leading a group of people or an organization to accomplish common goal. When we talk about leader, it refers to someone who has commanding influence or a person who initiates and builds a strong relationship to influence people to work together for a common goal. Next, let's talk about the 10 functions of leadership. Just remember the acronym OPN CD Promo para kay GF. O stands for organizing, P stands for planning, M stands for mobilization, C stands for controlling internal relationships, D stands for direction and guidance, P stands for problem solver, RO stands for role model, MO stands for motivation, G stands for group representation, and lastly, F stands for facilitation. First, let's talk about organizing. What do you mean by that? Organizing is an approach in which the leader brings individuals together to carry out a specific task efficiently. It is also a process of dividing the works or tasks into sections in order for the group to finish the task in an effective and efficiently manner using their collective abilities. Second is planning or setting goals. Most leaders understand the importance of planning. Individuals tend to be more comfortable when there is a plan in place because it reminds them of their goals. A plan provides the course of action to take and to help them to get there in the most straightforward way as well as on how and when they will be able to utilize resources for their set activities. Third, mobilization. To create a belief in the vision and direction of the set goals as well as to inspire extra efforts, enthusiasm, and commitment. Leaders must focus strongly on members' engagement. Leaders must ensure that the members are willingly to be engaged in assigned tasks in order to accomplish the set goals of the team. Fourth is controlling internal relationship. A leader acts as mediator during members' conflict. To build and maintain positive relationships, leader must be able to recognize and show respect for other people ideas, and perspectives even if they do not agree with them. Developing positive group relationships influence your success as a leader. Fifth is direction and guidance. To set direction, your message must be clear. A leader must be able to set the direction, create a sense of shared purpose, and guide behavior. Now, this requires developing your own clear vision of where you want to go, describing this future to others in simple language and providing meaningful guidance regarding how to move forward is an effective leadership function. Six, a leader is a problem solver. What do you mean by that? While leadership styles may vary, leaders must be able to quickly detect potential problems, either expected or unexpected problems. Leaders must be able to carry out necessary observation and then come up with a decision with alternative strategy and plans 
for certain situations. Seventh, a leader is also a role model which serves as an inspiration. A role model is an individual who displays certain behaviors or has achieved certain success that other people look up to and wish to emulate because a role model sets an examples that others try to follow. Eighth, a leader is also a motivator. Motivation in leadership. Motivation is a goal-oriented characteristics that helps a person achieve his or her objectives. It encourages an individual to work hard at achieving his or her goals. Motivational leadership refers to someone leading others by motivating them to strive for certain goals rather than simply act on orders. So here, leader inspires members and raises their spirits to keep moving and to do their best to attain goals. Ninth, a leader acts as a representative. A leader must be able to represent his team on a great variety of issues. If you are effective at representing your group, you'll be positively influenced their attitude, motivation, and enthusiasm. They will come to feel that what they think matters, that the ideas they develop are good, and that they are making a positive contribution to the entire group. And lastly, facilitation. Facilitation is a leadership skill. Members need leaders who can bring the team together to clarify goals, set priorities, assess progress, seek solution for problems, assign tasks, and be accountable to one another. Next, let's talk about leadership style. Leadership style refers to a leader's manner of giving instructions, implementing and executing plans, managing groups of people, and communicating ideas. Just remember the acronym ADEL. A stands for autocratic, D stands for democratic, and lastly, L stands for laissez fair. First, let's talk about autocratic leadership style. Autocratic leadership means that the leader has full power. Autocratic leaders tell groups what to do and expect group members to execute. Under time pressure, this style may work well allowing the leader to make a quick decision and providing the group with direct instruction. Under this leadership style, a leader who presents a clear vision can motivate a divided group. However, autocratic leaders are more likely to disregard the good ideas of others. Next, democratic leadership style. Democratic leadership balances decision-making responsibility between the group and the leader. Democratic leaders actively participate in discussion but also make sure to listen to the views of others. This style often leads to positive, inclusive, and collaborative work environment. Furthermore, a good democratic leader can bring out the group's creativity. Under this style, the leader still retains final responsibility for the group decision. One of the presidents of the Republic of the Philippines who brought democracy in the Philippines after the dictatorship of the former President Ferdinand E. Marcos was the former President Corazon Aquino. And lastly, Lazy's Fair. Lazy's Fair leadership allows group members total freedom. Lazy's Fair leaders do not participate in the decision making process and rarely offer opinions. This style can work well if the group is highly motivated and competent. However, lazy fair leadership has many drawbacks. Without the leader's input, the group can sink into conflict as members over rules and responsibilities. Next, we have two types of leadership. Just remember the acronym CP. C stands for consultative leadership and P stands for for persuasive leadership. When we talk about consultative leadership, it's all about developing the ability to influence people rather than impose them your authority. 
engaging subordinates effectively in the decision making and problem solving process is a good example of consultative leadership. Next is persuasive leadership style. It is the ability to convince others to change their action, decisions, opinions, or thinking. Mastering this competency is the way leaders become leaders. Persuasive people are generally friendly, polite, trustworthy, and knowledgeable. Next, let's now move on to the qualities of a leader. Just remember the acronym CP and TV. We have C5 and P squared. Character, charisma, commitment, competence, courage, passion, problem solver, team player, and a visionary. Let's now proceed to the qualities of a leader. First, character. Character refers to the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. Authentic leaders lead from a strong, personal, moral value that can have profound effect on your organization. Character is more than intelligence, integrity, ethics, judgment, self-awareness, empathy, or emotional health. Next, charisma. Charismatic leadership is a type of leadership in which authority derives from charisma of the leader. Usually, charismatic leaders are individuals who use their personality and communication style to gain the admiration of the followers. Next, commitment. Commitment is a leadership quality that inspires and attracts people. Commitment is dedication to a particular organization or a team and a willingness to get involved. Commitment involves dedicating yourself to something like a person or a cause. Next, competence. Leadership competencies are skills and attributes that you can possess which make you a good leader. Your competency in or ability to show these skills will increase the trust and commitment that your team has in you. Effective leaders inspire, encourage, and facilitate in order to improve the productivity of their team. The value of a leader is not determined by their own success, but by the success of the entire team. Next, courage. Courage is the quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty danger, and pain without fear. Courageous leaders lead with principles that guide them when pressure stands. They don't avoid brave actions because they do not fear failure. They don't need external adulation, nor do they shrink from facing criticism. Courage is neither an intellectual quality, nor can it be taught in the classroom. It can only be gained through multiple experiences involving personal risk-taking because courage comes from the heart. Next, passion. Passionate leaders are fully engaged and committed to achieving their goals while helping others achieve theirs. Passionate leaders always have a vision. It's what they are passionate about in order to stay focused Leaders must have specific goals that they are committed in accomplishing. Next, problem solver. Effective leaders that are comfortable with problem solving always know how to gather the right people, resources, budget, and knowledge from past experiences. They inspire people to live their game by making the problem solving process highly collaborative. For them, it's an opportunity to bring people closer together. Next, we have team player. Effective leaders show respect for all their team members and always ask for suggestions and feedback. And also, they keep lines of communication open at all times. And lastly, a visionary. A visionary leaders turn the vision into reality. What is visionary leadership? It is the connection of who you are why you're here, where you're from, and where you're going with all that is around you. Everything is interconnected. 
which is why all that surrounds you can affect well-being, creativity, motivation, and learning, not just for you, but for those you lead.